This is a Mampa cutter from Mampa Tools. They sent this to me, uh, Mampa Tools, a couple of years ago. I love it. This is might be one of my favorite uh, Mampa Tools that they make. And um, why am I guys showing you guys the Mampa Tool? Well, oh, why do I always spray the wrong side? Actually, look at that quilting in there, or whatever it's called. It's just a water test. Come on, you piece of junk. Look at that. Pretty friggin' neat. That's only sounded down to 80 grit. But let's show you guys the other side. Look at that quilting. This is a big ass burl I showed in my live video and I was asking you guys, what do you think I'm gonna carve in it? Well, this is my next project. Yep, let me get my tape measure. It's two feet tall, 17 inches wide and like eight inches thick. Why well, I showed you guys the Mampa cutter because this is a real super old Western red cedar burl. And this Mampa cutter, these things are razor sharp, these cutters. And this was, this wood was harder, like, it was like carving bricks to get this hole cut in here. So, what I want to say, I asked you guys to guess what it's going to, what I'm going to carve. I still want you guys to guess what this is going to be. This piece right here, I have a dream. I have a vision. This, I'm going to try and make this the best carving I've ever done. Not just for myself, but for my subscribers and everybody that has believed in me and still believes in me with my foul language and my mixed up words and my crazy weird antics. I'm going to try my very, very best on this piece. You might not see a lot of videos come out of me for the rest of this next week because I'm going to be putting a lot of hours into this piece. And I'm going to make it so it can almost like go into a wood carving show or something like that. I'm just going to try my very best. My very, very best. It's going to be a total carving fusion thing. My style. Whatever I want to do. Have fun. Carve deeper. Who cares? Screw the bullshit. And just do what you love to do. So I'm not going to say in the beginning of this video what this piece is going to be. I ask you guys to guess. So let's leave it for the end of the video to, to show what it's going to be. But I'll say one thing right now. Okay, I'm not sure at this point if I'm going to carve the outside or what I'm going to do, but I'll tell you one thing right now. This is, uh, here, let me get a tape measure. This is five inches deep there, and I'm going to carve this whole back wall and this wall and this right here. I'm going to carve it all. So imagine how much fun this is going to be because, well, oh, come on, jeez. Yeah, this thing is heavy. It's going to be hard to carve it down like this because then the dust is just going to come up. I'm going to have to wear my special dust mask. So, you know, and getting the Dremel in there. Where is it? Let's see here. Getting your Dremel in there to carve things in there. Your hand gets stuck on the side and you're going to this and that. What are, what are you thinking, Jordy? So there's not going to be much carving on this video. I'll stop at key points I think I want to talk about. Um, I got this piece of Pacific U wood. I was going to carve a wood. Actually, I was going to give this to just carve raw, but he said he didn't want it. Beggars can't be choosers. And uh, just kidding. But um, I think when you're doing a piece like this, you're going to have to sit yourself up so you're in a comfortable spot to carve. So I had to get a bigger piece of wood to jack it up. So see the way it is now. Now I can kind of get in here and carve it. So anyways, carry on. So. You can see the grain there. See the grain? So that means I'm carving against the grain, which is the hardest to carve. And it's it's like metal wood. So watch this. It This is a brand new cuts all bit, and it barely even carves the wood. It burns it. Oh, man. Anybody out there want to tell me how easy it is to... Uh, carve deep inside here 
you know, like six inches in there. Hardest cedar I've ever carved. Against the grain. 5,000 year old burl. So this video is going to be a little bit all over the map because uh, I have to go back and forth between my where I carve at home and then where I car do chainsaw carving. But here you see I decided to do the Shosugi ban on the uh, outside of the burl. I figured uh, I don't want to take away from the inside of what's happening, so I'll just do uh, the Shosugi ban on the outside. So yeah, like there's a lot of different things going on in this carve. I'm trying to take my best possible time that I could possibly take, but the inside carving, I kind of rushed it just to get it done because it was super hard to carve. Hardest cedar I ever had to carve, like I said, and in uh, against the grain. So you see there the Soshugi band. You really have to burn deep until you get that, I think they call it alligator crack or crocodile skin or something like that. You see how it's all cracked the same there in the, where the red ambers are. And I'm also burning deep where it's cracks. I want those cracks to uh, open up. You'll see right here. So getting a good deep burn in there. But the wood's so hard and so dry, it doesn't really open up. The cracks don't really open up too much, but they open up a bit. But when it's all said and done, you don't see them really that much. Just getting a good burn in there. And, um... Yeah, so this is, um, there's a deep burn. See how it looks like an alligator skin? And you can see the quilting in there too. Now this is, um, I think his name's Joe Ireland on, um, Joe Irish on YouTube. Uh, I think his Facebook message, Joe Irish. He introduced me to these nylon wheels. They're in my Amazon store. And actually, um, I really like them. I think you get four for like 25 bucks. They're a lot better than the uh, other kind that I used to use. I I'll talk about that in a bit. Here's a dust mask that I use, the Trend. It pushes air in so it doesn't fog up. And uh, it's been, it's got a rechargeable battery. It's not a cheap mask. That's also in my Amazon store. I think this was like five, 450 bucks Canadian. But uh, I love it. I think it's great. So here you go. I got that Peter Blair sanding mandrel there. I don't know if he's still selling those ones. I haven't talked to Pete lately. But um, that's the quarter inch, kind of like the one Ryan Cook uses. But um, actually, Pete's is better. It, uh, Chuck's metal, the other kind is a plastic head, a plastic chuck. This one's aluminum. Sorry, not metal, aluminum. But the more that you go over it with the sand, with the, you can't use sandpaper. Sandpaper will just, um, get lose. you'll lose the grains, the different colors. But the more that you go over this, the brighter that you're going to get the, the lights and the darks from the different color of a grain. And this is a burl, don't forget. So the wood grain is all over the map. But the more time you spend cleaning it, the, the, the brighter the whites are going to come and the dark, and well, the darks are going to stay dark. So you see there I go over it. See how it's getting brighter and brighter? It takes a lot of work to do that. I think the Shosugi band works better for uh, wider grain material. And this is super tight grain. Like I said, you don't get much older cedar than this. First growth, old burl. Bone dry. But you see how that area I'm hitting just gets super brighter. So here I am just, uh, I'm done that for now. Just to show you guys, look at that grain. So this is the um, old type I used to use on Amazon. They don't last that long, really. I think you get like three for like 25 bucks. They're, they're in my Amazon store. They're good too. But this is the new kind that I got. And uh, it's I've only used it the one time so far, but I already like it better. Look at all the quilting in here. All those bumps that you see, that's quilting. Now, if you say... This is not a cool grain. Look at that, how it's sw swooshing down there. If you say this is not a cool grain, well, I don't think we should be friends. Back to the home fort. Shit, I'm 
of my car. You bugger. Okay, so like here we go on to something different. So this is just sawdust. Um, I got two different pails there because I'm going to do two different colors. So this is me uh, making my own flocks, like that fake grass. Uh, thanks to, for Spike for reminding me because I did do a wizard uh, village before and I made, made my own flocks. I think it's called flocks, but I'm doing green and yellow. And like I said, this is just dry sawdust I got out of my dust collector. And uh, there's some green, I had green dye and I put some green paint in there too. So um, just pouring some more water in there, mixing it up pretty good. So you have, you know, you, I, I should have had the water in the, the, the paint and the dye mixed in water first, then put it in the sawdust, but I, I didn't care. So you see there, I'm just mixing it up. And um, there's, uh, here's some yellow. You don't really see the yellow here, but you'll see it in a second. Cause I want to have two different. Um, I could have made the, I could have made it brighter, but I don't want it to be bright, right? I want it to be like a old, old grass. So now I'm gonna let it sit here for a couple hours and just let the color dilute into. Well, would the word be dilute? Let the color soak into the wood. So here's a strainer. So I'm just uh, straining it, and cause since I picked it out of my dust collector table, that was my dust collector. There's lots of different things in there besides wood. See there, I'm picking it out. See that red thing? Bet you I picked that out too. Yep, got it. And then uh, I put it on uh, like a cookie baking sheet or whatever, a baking sheet. Picking stuff out, spread it out. And then I'm going to drop it in the oven. You can let this naturally dry. I did before for a couple weeks. I let it dry when I did my wizard village. But there it is in the oven. Got the oven way too high. Yep. Don't forget that you're putting wood in the oven so it can catch fire. Yeah, look at that. Whoo, smoky. Okay, so there, look, I pulled it out and it was smoldering. So just, you know, be very cautious when you, if you're going to put it in the oven, put it on a super low temperature. And um, just all I can say is be careful. Watch this. See that? Boof. Hey, Ben, Studio and Lake, how you doing? Boof. The, the smoldering was underneath it. So I put this outside, made sure there was no smoke. And then, um, yeah, here we go. It's dry. There's the yellow. And there's the green on the left. So I'm just going to glue that down later and uh, it will be my grass. So this is uh, epoxy pour I did the night before. And I just put some uh, red red dye in there, like that stuff that I got from Lee Valley. Pigment, I guess it's called. That's just a fine burr I got on there right now. Just to, I put it in a paper cup. And I, like a wax paper cup. And I just kind of cut the paper cup away. So here's me really going for it. Now that's a, a metal working burr. And uh, just kind of hollowing out the hole for a bit. And uh, just doing some shapes. These these metal working burrs cut really uh, really clean. And they're, um, they're, they, they cut pretty good on this um, epoxy. I did pour four epoxies just in case I didn't like one or I, I cut through it. You know me, I cut through things all the time. So, um, yeah, there was, I, and I did different colors. But this is the end. This one here is the one I, I end up choosing. I didn't like it at first because I thought it looked a little bit pink, but once I, you'll see. Just uh, cutting it away, trying to shape it so it's like flames, like a fire pit. So here now I got the, um, that is the cut saw, um, cipher burr, I think it is. That's Bap's favorite burr, he said anyways, but, um, that's, uh, way more aggressive. So I'm hollowing out the inside because, well, you'll see in a bit here, I'm going to make a light to go inside of it and, um, it's going to be like a fire pit. So now I got a diamond burr on there just to finish cleaning everything up. I remember it cuts through this stuff too. It's super easy to carve. It's consistent. And this is just uh, not five minute epoxy, but just normal epoxy. I poured four in uh, four wax cups with different colors. So this is sped up four times the speed. This is just, you know, wear your dust mask. Please wear your dust mask. Even though I got my dust collector table, I wear my dust mask when I'm carving now too. That's why you're getting more of these voiceovers. And they're good because you don't have to listen to the Dremel. And the dust noise, dust collector noise going. And I do spray these with a clear coat. So 
there's the one I just carved. So there's the one, and here's more orange one. I thought I might like the orange one first because that red one looked a little bit pink. Okay, so now these are flame bulbs, all right? So they look like when you, they're for like lamps. And so what I got here is just the normal size ones. That's a normal size one, way too big to fit where I want it to get, you know, but let's do a little test there. So that's where it's going to be. It's going to be like a fire pit in there. <clears throat> so let's see how this works on the epoxy pour. See if I can make it look like it's, it's a burning fire. So yeah, looks it kind of resembles a fire a bit. But that, that light's way too big. I got the bigger, so this is the bigger one, and then I got smaller ones. I think the smaller, like the smaller screw-in sockets are E12s. I think the bigger ones are E26 or 27. So, yeah. Pop, fire pit. Here's a smaller one, okay? So, I had to wait a night for the smaller one sockets to come in. From, I ordered them from eBay. Uh, sorry, Amazon. So I take this light apart because I want to see what's on the inside of it. I, they're LED lights, so they're you know, do this at your own risk. That's all I can say. So pop, there it is apart. Let's see what's inside the guts here. So it came apart where I in, a, in the normal seam. It didn't even come apart where I cut it with that little diamond cutting disc. So that's where I cut it. This ring here. There, there's your little LED lights inside of it. So it looks pretty safe to me. But like I said, don't do what I'm doing. And if you're going to do this, do it at your own risk. Because this is electricity. And I don't want to be accountable for anybody um, killing themselves or catching their house or apartment or whatever on fire. So see how that fits in there a little bit better? I'm just looking at it kind of doing inspector gadget johnson stuff here and uh <laughs> yeah so um and anybody just carve rob's my best online friend and if you guys hear me say i'm coming for you just carve rob it's a complete joke between me and rob and he knows it and i even asked him if i could say, say it yeah he says bring it it's just joking i love rob's carvings like rob's carvings are my favorite carving he's my other, my other favorite carver out there so there I painted the uh, the ceiling and the, the base black. This is a uh, poly shade black. That's all I had. I went to the store. They didn't have any freaking black. So I bought some, uh, my favorite color, Bombay Mahogany. Poly shade, Minwax. Love this stuff. So there I'm going to mix some uh, Bombay Mahogany. See how messy I am? In with the black so I can try and make the mahogany a little bit darker than it, that normally is because i did want to make the background this is for the background i did want to make it black there i am stirring it together mixing the colors yep it's like an experiment arts an experiment so there i am putting it on the the background letting it soak in pretty good i spent a day carving that well not a day full day i rushed that background i want it to be more like a not like a wood spirit, but just kind of like a creepy, um, what would the word be, Aztec scene. So I put circles and I put some triangles in there. So here I am. I got it all done. Now I've got it upside down to let all the extra poly shade drip out. Hoping it's not going to drip on the outside shell. Because if it does, I, it's no big deal. I can fix it. Just sand it, burn it, and then buff it out again to get the grains pop. But here you go. Here comes a bomb. Three, two, one. <laughs> Anyways, so I'm leaving it like that overnight. And don't put your uh, rags with stuff like that in the garbage because it can combust, catch a fire. I let them sit overnight and dry out. Okay, so what do we got going on here? So there is, see how it's kind of like just like a weird tribal kind of weird thing? I'm not going to tell you what this carving is, what it's going to be based on. You still have to guess. But um, just showing what's going on. So see some, it dripped on the outside there. No big deal. I can clean that up. See it dripped there too. I still got to uh, Peter Blair sanding mandrel this. 
See, that's like an eye I carved over in there, just kind of like a different shape. I there's my new two five one one just showed up in the just showed up today. My parents went and got it for me. They like to uh, buy it on their visa, and I give them the cash. So there, I'm pre-drilling a hole for the light. Okay, now here's a Peter Blair sanding mandrel, and uh, just doing my carve infusion thing, sanding all the high points, making it pop a bit more. So the dark point, the dark spots will stay dark, and the high points will be brighter. I don't want. I want this to be dark. I want it to be hard to kind of see like what's going on. I want people to have to look and see kind of what what is that back there. Well, it is whatever you want it to be. So here I am at back at chainsaw carving tent. There's the fire pit that I got lining everything up, and um, I got to make sure I do not cut through the bottom. I'm just double checking things now. I'm going to pull up my mampa cutter. Love the mampa cutter, and then I'm going to do a big deep hole diagonally down through the back and carlos creations told me that um this thing wouldn't jump so much if i got rid of that extender on it when i first start but i needed the extender here so you see here i should plunge it in and out so it brings the sawdust out but there's me i just get shit done and just just get in the get the wood out of there we got no time to waste so there i am bringing the sawdust back out and you know, so this leaves a, like a cork in the middle, so it only goes down so far, so that I'm going to pull out the mampa cutter, and I'm going to break it off, the, the inner cork off with my special carving fusion hammer. You'll see in a minute. Okay. There you go. Where are you, Jordy? Here's my carving fusion hammer, screwdriver, wrench thing. Yep. See? It's the ha only hammer I had on standby, so I was filming, so I had to hurry up, right? But this is where it gets really good. I turn it into uh, pliers. See? Pull it out. Yeah. You guys ever see a hammer turn into a set of pliers? Hmm. There's a first for everything, isn't there? <laughs> okay, so here I am going to, uh, since that's hauled out, now I got the Mampa cutter back in there. This is a great investment. I love this tool. I know I'm kind of sponsored by Mampa Tools. They don't pay me. They just send me tools once in a while. But uh, I love it, man. If I didn't like it, I'd tell you guys. I'll be like, yeah, they sent this to me. I think it's a piece of crap. But it's a great qual. All the Mampa Tools are quality tools. Okay, so there's the light thing. I uh, epoxied it so it's on an angle now. So when I shove it down the hole, it will kind of um, stick up. See how that works? So. I think it's going to work. See that? No, I just, it, the fire pit's got to be lower, so I just lower the bulb, and then the whole thing will come down. And, uh, I've, yeah, the nightmare is going to begin pretty soon. I'll, well, it's not much of a nightmare, but it's just stupidity on my behalf. So there's the flame pit, there's the hole, and the light bulb fits down there. Okay, so there's the flame pit. So, okay, here's the light that I cut. I epoxied it into a place like that. So you'll see I cut the top off. I cut the top off because putting just the epoxy piece that I carved over the light made it too shoddy, like like sparky. But I put that white thing from the top inside there to dull in the little tiny sparks. So it's not so sparky and like jaggedy. Now it's a lot smoother with that white thing in there. So I did, I did, um, okay, let's, so you'll see what I mean when I, so I got the E12 sockets in the mail just when I made this video. So let's see. So these lights you turn on, they stay on. If you turn them on and off, then they'll flicker. Okay, so you'll see here it's going to flicker. See how it flickers and it's not that smooth? So when it's like, okay, so the white thing's in there, so. But without the white thing, it's a lot more. Um, it just looks like square flickers. With the white thing in there, it's smoother. It looks like little flame, like little exhaust fires are happening or whatever it is. So here's another type of bulb, flame bulb, all right? This one, I think, I don't use this. I could use it, but I think 
I just want to, uh, it's because it's not, I don't think it's LED. I think it's like the bulb got warm. So you don't want to put that inside the wood, right? So it would have been a lot easier to use that little tiny bulb. I wouldn't have had to carve such a big, huge hole in the back for it to fit in. But uh, like I said, I think it's just like a normal light bulb. And I don't, I'm pretty sure it's not a LED. So that's just the electricity in there doing that. But don't hold me to it. But anyways, I, I decide not, for safety reasons, I decide not to use it. So now let's turn this one on. And you can see how smooth it's just a little bit. It's not that bright in real life. I turn the light on to try and make it not so bright on camera. But so I did a what that's the smoothest one, right? And that light would fill fit it down deep down in the big hole that I drilled with the bamba cutter. But the fire pit wouldn't sit on it properly. So I'm giving this one the thumbs up right now, but I don't do the test. So I'm showing you guys in this video all the. See, look how that thing looks like a freaking Aztec cool thing. So there's a normal bulb in there. And see, it's way up high, the fire pit. I do lower the bulb down. There's lower. But I just, you know, it just didn't work for me. So I'm going to go back to the uh, Jordy Johnson MacGyver um, Inspector Gadget thing, light bulb that I made. So epoxy sculpt okay so you got a part a and a part b you guys a spot epoxy sculpt is on amazon it's in my amazon store super fun to use you got about an hour's working time with it i think so you got a part a and a part b all right so here i am there's the two parts i'm mixing it together all right so this is where it not a nightmare but just a huge waste of time so there I am. I'm going to epoxy sculpt. This stuff gets hard like plastic, right? So I'm going to epoxy sculpt. There. See, I made a base. Okay. Now the light sits nice and flat and everything's good. And I epoxy sculpt down inside the hole too. So we light it so it doesn't heat up the wood. So there I epoxy sculpt some rocks because I'm going to paint those like white and gray after. And, um, yeah, it's messy all over your hands, so wash your hands with warm water and dish soap right away. There it looks like Ku Klux Klan's kind of hanging around, but there's just carved Rob Gnome and a couple little Geordie Gnomes. So there it's working. I think it's looking pretty good. It's not the, meant to be the Ku Klux Klan, but kind of, you know, all you'd need is a cross there, and it would be the Ku Klux Klan, and it would be hate. So, okay, look what we got there now. What's that around the fire pit? All right. So this epoxy sculpt didn't dry. I was thinking, well, this is supposed to, there's some carbon fusion ghost skulls. This was supposed to cure in an hour, but I'm thinking, how come? Here's just carve Rob gnome. Hey, just carve Rob. Do you have a skull fire pit? Your little gnome there. This is the noise I was making when I did this. Watch this. Hold on a second. Yeah, you got a little... Hop, 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 hop. I'm a just carve Rob Gnome. Hop, 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 hop. Yep, I'm a car just carve Rob Gnome. Stay warm by the fire pit, people. And it's kidding, everybody. It's a joke. So what I did, what the epoxy sculpt did not cure because I have so much. They have a epoxy sculpt clay. There's part A and part B. See that? There's sculpt, then there's clay. A and A. So what I did, I mixed a epoxy sculpt clay A and a epoxy sculpt, just a regular epoxy sculpt clay A. I didn't mix A and B, long story short. I mixed two A's, so this stuff didn't cure. But I did check when I started it. I check, okay, this is A, this is B. So down in the pit, you'll see the down in the pit, where I first put the ring around to hold the pit, the floor, the floor got solid. Okay, so this it's been three hours. It's not hard. So now I gotta rip all this bullshit out. I kind of like those skulls. You know, it's just crap. Kaboom. Wall sticker. So there it is. So now I'm got some brush stuff, some 
scotch break cleaning it the floor up but see the floor still in there because that stuff's hard i mixed it right at first i guess i wasn't paying attention then i grabbed a different jar and mixed up a different jar the top surface didn't care it's a goddamn nightmare i tell you it's my own look it's mush crap that's the end of this video so you have to see what um the next video I don't think will be so long. All the hard work's done now. It's just putting the floor in, painting the rocks, and doing some abracadabras and see what I do around the fire pit now. Hope everybody's good. And um, video after this will be out in a couple days. Thanks for watching. Take care. Peace out.